Hello everyone. Um, in this video, we will look at a very key concept in economics. Um, we will look at how firms profit maximize. Profit maximization is a crucial topic in economics. And this is really because um, money will make people better off. Money will make individuals as well as companies better off. So as the decision maker of a company, if you're the CEO of a firm, well, you better know what, what you can do to increase your revenue, to increase your profit, so that your shareholders are happy, and so that you keep your job. And, and, and this is essentially why we spend so much time um, in economics studying this. There are four types of basic types of competitions, the perfect competition, the monopoly, the oligopoly, and the monopolistic competition. Um, you should have taken an, an introductory course in economics before, so you should know what these terms are. Uh, we're not going to go through them uh, in this course. We will spend our, most of our time looking at uh, the oligopolies, and in particular, we will focus on three types of oligopolies, the Cournot, the Bertrand, and the von Stackelberg. And the Cournot competition is where you have firms competing by setting the output level. So as a company, you will decide how many units to produce and how many units to sell to increase, to maximize your revenue, to maximize your profit. For the Bertrand competition, firms compete by setting prices. So you will decide how much you will charge your product or your service so that your profit is maximized. And for the von Stackelberg case, uh, your competing companies are competing by quantity, but you have one company going first, and you have other companies following that first company. And this happens a lot with technology firms. For example, you might have you know one company, one company develops a new game, for instance, new phone or something, and then this company will get to sell first, and then other companies will follow. Other other companies will enter the market following the first company. So in this case, we will see, we'll show in later analysis that if one company gets to go first, this company will make, will be able to make a lot more revenue, will be able to make a lot more money than the follower firms. And this is a very important concept to remember. Um, it is recommended that you have a course in calculus and then you know how to differentiate functions, you know how to maximize functions. And if you don't, I'll have a, calculus review section um, where you can sort of quickly learn the subject and to be able to follow the lecture. We'll start with the, um, the calculus review. And of course, if you know how to differentiate functions and if you know how to maximize functions, um, you're welcome to skip this section. Um, then we will, in every section, in every following section, we will look at one form of competition. So we'll start with perfect competition, then Monopoly, then the Cournot, the von Stackelberg, the Bertrand, the cartel case of the, du of the Cournot duopoly, and finally the monopolistic competition. And if you're just looking to solve a specific problem, um, you're welcome to jump into one specific section that will help you, and, but sometimes the example will follow so if you start from one section, uh, then you might have to spend a little more time trying to figure out you know, what has happened before, try to follow up with the uh, example. So our first topic is differentiation. And differentiation is the process of finding the instantaneous chain, rate of change of a function. So let's say we have a function, and the function models say, the distance from your current position to your house. And if, if we think of the instantaneous rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change of your position, what does that really mean? Like, what if I say your instantaneous rate of change is very fast, it's a ver very big number, your instantaneous change is huge? Well, that means you're traveling, you're, you're moving away from your house at a very quick rate, or you're moving towards your house at a very quick rate. If your instantaneous chain rate of change is small, that means you're moving slowly. 
right? Because your change at that particular instant isn't isn't very big, isn't very fast. So instantaneous rate of change or the differentiation essentially tells you of how fast the function is changing at the specific instant, at one moment, at one particular time. So we'll start with the most simple, the simplest polynomial function, um, f of x equals to ax to the power of b. When we differentiate that function, we first multiply the coefficient, so the coefficient would be a, by the exponent, so the exponent would be b, so we say a times b. Then we take 1 away from the exponent, so then we have b, b is the old exponent, now we take 1 away, so the new exponent would be b minus 1. So then the derivative of that function would be a, a b x to the power of b minus 1. Now, for example, if let's say f of the function f of x is 3x to the power of 5, then this function would have a derivative of 15x to the power of 4, because 3 times 5 gives you 15, so that's your new coefficient, and your original exponent is 5, and you take away 1, that gives you 4, right? So that's your derivative, 15x to the power of 4. And it works the same way if your exponent is a negative number. So let's say our function is now x to the power of minus 2. Well, first of all, this function hasn't, doesn't have a coefficient in front, so that means the coefficient is actually 1. Then coefficient times the exponent gives you 1 times minus 2, so it's minus 2 is your new coefficient, and minus 2 take away 1 is minus 3, so that's your new exponent. So then the derivative is minus 2 x to the power of minus 3. And when you have multiple terms adding or subtracting, you can differentiate term by term. So in the last example, uh, 30x plus x, 2x to the power of minus 9 plus 1, well, you begin by differentiating the first term, so 30x becomes 30, and then you do it for, to the next term, 2x two, two to the power of minus 9 becomes minus 18x to the power of minus 10. And finally, the last term, 1, all constants have derivative 0. So the derivative of x, 1 is 0. Then you add everything back together, and that's your derivative for the whole function. Now, the, the purpose of finding derivatives is so that we can maximize or minimize functions. Let's suppose that we have a function, um, f of x equals to minus 5x squared plus 20x. To find its maximum, first we find its derivative. So its derivative would be minus 10x plus 20. And we set the derivative equal to 0. And we, we solve for x. So you'll find in this particular example, uh, x equals 2. x equals 2 is called a critical value. So at this point, it could be a maximum or it could be a minimum. We don't know from just taking the first derivative, but we know that's a critical value. Then to see whether it's a maximum or a minimum, we take its second derivative. So we take, a deriv we take the derivative of the derivative, which we get uh, minus 10. So that's the second derivative. Then you plug in the value, the critical value, into the second derivative. So because f is a constant minus 10, that means f, f double prime at 2 is also minus 10. f is minus 10 at every, everywhere, basically. So because the second derivative is minus, because the second derivative at the critical value is minus, that means the function has reached a maximum there. And again, if the second derivative at that particular point at your critical value is positive, that means the function has reached a, a, a minimum at this point. And if the second derivative at your critical value is zero, um, then it is inconclusive at that point. So you don't really know. You can't tell um, if it's a maximum or a minimum. In fact, it's neither. It's called a inflection point. 